Yeah, good morning together. I uh, want to talk about ESG with a bit, a bit of help. So the, the original quote would, of course, be with a uh, help from my friend, Indy, but uh, I took it for, so for the geeks with a, with a bit of help. Um, and um, it, so ESG is a, is a dry uh, term. Um, so uh, it relates to uh, so the Hyperledger community in a way. So we, what I would like to come forward with is what technolo Hyperledger technology can really do to help with ESG. ESG stands for Environmental, Social and Governance. Uh, and it really helps to give a view on sustainability for three different areas, the, the world area, uh, the environment, then the people area, the, the social aspects, and then, um, of course, the third one, the, the governance, the, the organizational area. And as dry as it sounds, uh, there is uh, quite an interest from uh, the investor side uh, in, in ESG, and it has been proven that companies that follow up seriously on ESG really perform better financially. And that is uh, because of uh, the long-term sustainability that is then also with the financial revenue that comes uh, uh, through the uh, follow-up on ESG uh, targets. There are different schemes, different frameworks uh, where ESG is measured, but nevertheless, it's fairly difficult to really have a, have a grip on on the metrics, on, on ESG metrics. Another reason why companies perform better is also because of us. So more and more, we, we go into a supermarket, we look at a product, uh, and we think, oh, is it uh, CO2 neutral? It has a particular carbon footprint, maybe, or we, in certain products, uh, food products, uh, we, we care about where, where the fish comes from, where the ingredients come from, maybe which region in the world, how, how, much, how far it traveled. So there, there, there's more and more awareness from all of us. And that puts pressure on the first um, um, sort of supplier of a good, but then it triggers really down the entire supply chain. And that's um, more a product level aspect of ESG. And that's where uh, I want to go uh, with this uh, sort of uh, brief keynote here. Uh, so on the product level, uh, we talk about something like the product carbon footprint, uh, so it's a term that really tells what is the, the sum of emissions when you look from the cradle where, where, where basically everything came from, the, the mining and the material that goes into an end product, but also the different steps, the processing steps, the manufacturing steps, until a point where it actually leaves the gate. So a cradle to gate, that's the product carbon footprint. And you could look at other things like water consumption or the, the, the product water footprint, as it is called, or oh, there are other aspects uh, in, terms on, in terms of conflict minerals, how, how many of these are within a particular product. Um, uh, of course, it then relates where exactly were these minerals coming from. It's not necessarily just the fact that they are conflict minerals in there, but it's the potential that there is an issue. And other things like, like um, forced labor or the certification of the suppliers uh, that, that contribute to an end product. And now, um, there is a big problem because actually 90% of the information related to ESG related uh, things come from the supply chain. So as a single manufacturer, as an organization, you could look into your own factory environment, uh, production uh, facility, and you find out what is called scope one, scope two. So the local emissions in the CO2 context, it's called like this, the local emissions, the um, the energy consumption, uh, but it's very difficult in the supply chain uh, to ask your supplier because your supplier, again, as a supplier, and in, in the automotive industry, it's up to seven steps uh, that you have to follow up in order to aggregate the final product carbon footprint. So there is a problem, and it is an ecosystem problem. It is a problem about trust, decentralized uh, environment, because suppliers sit anywhere in the world. Um, so. Uh, we all sort of think naively, well, blockchain is the solution here, uh, and it can help to track the aspects of a product along the supply chain and make everything more transparent. And my uh, sort of reply would be, really? Um, is it really like this? Can we really just use a decentralized ledger? Everything uh, from, the, from the different suppliers will be stored there, uh, and we can then do this aggregation. And what we found out, uh, sort of, I, I work for Siemens, we do a lot in industrial production. Suppliers will not be ready uh, to give 
critical information to such a system. Uh, even though it's blockchain and um, yeah, we, we come with our value propo proposition of it's, it's secure and safe and so on, but the, it's the access really, who can see the data, that's, that's not clear even though this data might, might be in a blockchain. So uh, there is the confidential data, for instance, the, uh, the bill of material, the, <clears throat> the number of um, suppliers, uh, the mix of suppliers, also the, the ratio, how you, how you mix basically the sourcing. So a lot of uh, cr sort of market critical or differentiation critical information that suppliers would not want to hand over. So what we came up with is a slightly different approach where we use verifiable credentials, put it on uh, to, to all of you, I, I, I think, and we chain this approach of this, this triangle of having a certifier holder and a verifier along the supply chain. So this triangle basically is it multiple times used in the supply chain. And this approach came out of an association. So it's not a single company that drives this. Uh, it's, an, it's an association the, called the Asthenium Association where, where this is promoted. Um, and uh, we use, um, of course, the Indie Stack um, in uh, a running network. That's the ID Union network. Maybe some of you have heard of it. Uh, it's a European indie network that is in production now, run by a European uh, cooperative, so a very interesting uh, legal entity also that is behind there where all the, the members um, have a, a very efficient way of operating uh, this, this network as well. And maybe lastly, I, I just uh, point to this graph where you see basically a request from a customer is then triggered through the supply chain and every supplier has a certifier the certifier issues a credential, it can be presented then by uh, a supplier to the next tier. Uh, and through this, you don't know anything uh, in the underlying decentralized infrastructure about uh, the, the actual values of the credentials because they are exchanged peer to peer. Underlying are only the public keys of the, of the certifiers and they would be very happy that the world knows about their public keys and the, the schemas that, have, that are being used for the data. So that's uh, in quick. I think this is already on zero, so I probably have to talk, uh, stop talking. So thanks a lot.